Flaminia, a knitter from Italy and about uh, 10 minutes ago I decided that today I want to start remaking the first sweater that I ever made in my life, that I ever knitted in my life, sorry. So uh, I am here with my little knitting journal thing and with the sweater in question. Here it is. It is the Sable Sweater by Well Love Knit. And so, oh my god, the fluff. Uh, it was my first ever knitted garment. And this design is beautiful and it is for sure very beginner friendly. But I think there are some alterations that I want to make to this garment. Just because I think that it would look much better and I currently don't wear it a lot because of some things, things that I will explain to you in a bit. But yeah, I just want to see in general how I progressed in this year and a half since I made this because I made this December 2021. Now I think I'm just gonna write down the modifications I want to make to this. Okay, I'm done with my notes. I wrote down three main modifications. So, firstly, I want to change the neckline. So you can see that it is kind of this mock neck style, high neck thing. I have no idea how to describe it to you, but you can see it. But uh, I use 100% of pack yarn. And it is quite drapey and quite heavy and it is supposed to stand up by itself but because of the yarn I chose it's really not it's really not standing up in the right way I think I want I fold the neckline but I think I'm going to change it into one by one ribbing because I think that two by two ribbing with this yarn just looks a little bit too like wide and thick I don't know I hope that one by one ribbing will help like the yarn spring back together a little bit more than this so this is the first one the second one are of course the hemlines these are so non-stretchy they are so tight and it is super difficult to get my hands through so definitely gonna change that and I think I'm going to do one by one ribbing even for here and third modification that I want to make is I want to add a short rose to the neck because it just makes garments fit a lot better of course and I made a little note and I said that I like the overall fit of this like the amount of ease that it is built into this thing but I think I made it slightly larger than the, what the pattern suggests for a size small that you know it's what I made so while I'm unraveling it I'm just gonna count like how many stitches I have on the arms and just the overall amount of stitches so that I can basically recreate the fit but yeah and also the um, the neckline it has slip stitches on like crocheted on the base of the collar to prevent it from stretching. I might do it again after I finish this because this is a very heavy sweater but yeah I just want to change like I don't, I don't think it's working for this type of neckline so yeah. Uh, this is all the yarn that I have and I also have like about one full skein left and so yeah I think we should start unraveling this ah. okay here we are all set and ready lying i don't have my scissors so here we are all set and ready for the unraveling part and the only notions that i use pretty much are just a dpn or a spare needle to help me like undo the stitches if they get a little bit stuck especially uh, with this sweater because it is 
the yarn is quite fluffy so we will see of course but i can foresee that in some parts it will be a little bit tricky especially the bind off it is just a normal bind off in pattern but i don't know we will see then a pointy scissor just in case if i need it uh, if i can be honest with you i was kind of torn on <laughs> if i wanted to do this video today because i just finished unraveling a um, over the knee length fingering weight skirt black skirt so uh, i'm kind of tired of unraveling stuff but the process of it i really like it and at the moment i am working on uh, a fingering weight dress and a fingering weight sweater so uh, i want a little bit of a break from them but it is okay of course this is worked on 10 millimeter needles and 9 millimeter needles which is huge huge but yeah i hope my hands won't die okay the first part is uh finding the end the woven in end but even when i first started knitting i was very good at weaving ends so this will be time consuming for sure <laughs> because i have no idea where it is <laughs> I just started unraveling the body <clears throat> let me tell you i'm breathing in so much fiber it's probably so bad i would definitely suggest to do this in a place where there's more ventilation <laughs> my throat is hurting but let's move on and finish this It's after dinner, it's like 11 p.m. But I finished unraveling my sweater. I have all my bows here ready. I mean, I was... Let me show you. Oh, first let me show you how much fuzz it came out of the... Looks like cat I don't know but it probably wasn't a really healthy process to do inside the house but <coughs> we did anyway so I mm, firstly I've never washed or blocked that garment so I've never washed the yarn first second I saw you know this is the used yarn and this is the new yarn it ki this kind of looks different you know it looks used but not because it has like kinks or anything this yarn has 
basically no memory at all. I wasn't sure whether you cannot really tell the difference actually. Whatever. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether to wash this yarn. But I probably should because I do this every time when I, you know, ravel stuff. I always wash it. So I guess that now I'm going to put them in hangs and and just wash it whenever the other yarn that I'm currently washing is, you know, washed because it's taking a little longer, but whatever. And then they're gonna dry and then we are finally ready to cast on. I'm so excited, oh my God. washed and dried and it's very very soft and I put all the yarn into skeins form so that I can then wind them up later and while I was frogging the sweater I have to tell you I made some decisions or like just things I want to try to alter uh, while frogging the sweater, I realized how loose the fabric was and especially in the ripping, it was very loose, so the original sweater is made, was made with uh, 10 millimeter needles for the entire sweater and 9 millimeter needles for the ribbing. Now, as this yarn, it is, it is pretty thick, but it's not like it's extremely thick. I think that I can go down to nine millimeter needles for the body, but as I don't have like eight or seven millimeter needles, I will swatch like in ribbing with six millimeter needles that are like the biggest size that I have under nine millimeter needles. Just to see how that looks and to see if that is too tight with the number of stitches I want to cast on and then maybe modify the cast on number a little bit. But yeah, so now I will take a little skein, wind it up and swatch to see how the ripping looks and then just cast on maybe. We will see. So I did a little swatch, quick little swatch. I did, as I said, one by one ribbing in six millimeter needles and the body in nine millimeter needles. I find that it looks so, so much better than before because the ribbing is much more neat and the stockinette fabric itself is not as see-through. It's still an open fabric, but not, but not as much. And oh my god, like I am knitting so many fingering weight projects that look how big these are chunky boys. Like for reference, these are the three millimeter needles that I'm using. That's pretty different. That this is gonna go by a super quickly. Super super quickly. So I would say I'm going to see if I 
if it is more convenient to cast on a little bit more stitches for the neck and then I will do that and update you guys. Mm -hmm. you guys yet because I wanted to kind of figure out all the difficult parts of camera and then talk to you so this is what the sweater is currently looking like I made double folded collar in the end and we had a full star because I cast it on I think too many stitches for what I was expecting, for what I was wanting to do. And plus this is gonna be, like this is gonna stretch out a ton. So it is okay. I made this kind of long because if it ends up being a mock neck sweater, it is okay. But also if it stretches out so that it becomes more of a round neck crew neck sweater, it is also okay. So let me pop it on looking pretty but i wanted to tell you so i think that firstly i wanted to follow you know bethany's pattern i think i won't do that because i mean i modified the cast on number i made one by one ribbing instead of two by two the raglan is not two stitches like the pattern so it has nothing like that pattern so i'm making it up kind of going. It had a 2x2 two two ribbing on the collar because after that you kind of continue with the column with that aligns with the raglan stitches but I don't know with one by one but as I instead made one by one I didn't want to make a two stitch raglan because it just felt like it something was wrong please don't ask I have no idea what I'm saying but I uh, so it is a three stitch raglan you know I placed other things and I worked the short rows as you may see like yeah so this is how long the back is and this is how long the front is and it fits really well so I'm proud of that and I am positive enough and confident enough maybe that it will be structured enough to kind of maintain shape even though this sweater will be very heavy. So as today is the 10th of April 
and now I'm on the Easter break but I think I will have to go back to uni soon unfortunately or fortunately depends on how you see it today it is just gonna be um, sitting on the couch knitting with my mom while watching the Pirates of Caribbean because it's like my comfort series you know so yeah it will be great see you next Basically, uh, I forgot how quickly these sweaters, these chunky sweaters knit up. And so basically I knit the collar and the yoke as split for body and sleeves in a day. Am I right? Like basically. Uh, and so, yeah, I split for body and sleeves. Wait. I put sleeves on just spare needles. Oh my god, I'm losing stitches. How was that possible? Ugh. Okay. So this is how it is looking, and I'm so happy with the fit so far. Like uh, this neck is so high and structured, and the short rows makes the neckline just fit so well that it just hugs like the neck in all the right places without bunching up or just being tied in one area and whatever so i really like it so far i love the chonky tron raglan and yeah i think the ease is okay and i got pretty good progress on the body i don't know if i will continue working on this today i mean i worked on this just a couple of hours, maybe one hour and something this afternoon, but my hands are kind of hurting and it is 10 to 8 p.m. So it is about dinner time. But yeah, this, I thought that, you know when you shave, like a sweater peels a lot, but then you shave it once and then it peels a little less. When, so, okay. Fun story, when I first knitted this sweater up, you know, it was COVID time, so I was um, going to school like from 10 p.m. to 3 p.m. because, um, you know, they had to divide the time, time schedules a little. And basically I had to carry a lunch box, box? A lunchbox with me to school and I found uh, a fluff of this sweater like not a full fluff like a little bit of fiber in the tuna pasta that my mom made me like in the morning 
and that's so random and today I was brushing my hair and my hair somehow it was or it is still full of <laughs> a pack of fluff from this sweater but that is just how it is apparently and there was like a good amount of green fibers on the brush too so whatever <clears throat> I will update you guys when I have a little bit more progress on this I'm so happy oh my god this is so cute and I love the color not the color the color this green color nice 